Eddie Inzotto, GamerNode.com. We're here at PAX East 2013, and I'm here with Ted Price of Insomniac Games. How you doing, sir? I'm great, thank you. Awesome. So, we're going to talk about Fuse. So, tell us, uh, what is Fuse the game, and what is Fuse the substance? Fuse is a brand new IP from Insomniac. It's a four-player cooperative shooter with a story-driven campaign and another mode which we call Echelon, which is a special mode I can go into details on later. Okay. But it revolves around your pursuit of Fuse, this alien substance which was dug up by the U.S. in the 1940s and has been experimented on for decades until it surfaces in our own special made-up Insomniac version of Earth. Okay. So how will players be controlling these members of this squad? Well, it's a co-op game, so there aren't squads necessarily. There are four characters that are always in the game. Okay. Whether you're playing by yourself, with okay. one player, two player, or three other players, you can, you're always going to be playing with four. And we don't make much of a distinction between you playing by yourself or you playing with three other people. You are always playing with those four. There is no direct control over the other characters in the game. However, you can leap back and forth between the characters at any time as long as one of those characters is being, being controlled by a bot. Right. So let me give you an example. We're playing together. Yes. And we're playing, you're playing Dalton, which is one of the characters in the game. I'm playing Izzy. And the other two characters, Jacob and Naya, are being played by AI. So I decide, okay, I want to try out some of Izzy's capabilities. I'm going to leap to, actually, or maybe it was Naya, I can't remember who you're playing and who I'm playing, but <laughs> I'm going to leap to one of the other characters to check out his or her abilities. And so instantaneously I can jump. And all of a sudden now I, am, I have a completely different arsenal, a completely right. different type of character. And once I've leapt, then my former character is available for you to leap into. So it becomes sort of a game of musical chairs. But it's relevant because in the game, these characters are all what we call class-based operatives. They actually have archetypes that will be familiar to RPG players. We okay. have a tank, we have a healer slash uh, crowd control specialist, we have a stealth specialist slash AOE expert, and we have a distant damage dealer slash trap expert. And all these characters uh, offer very different ways of playing the game. And right. so we, with Leap, we give players the opportunity to experience them all. And uh, the last thing I'll say about that is most games that we all play today which offer multiple characters, lock you into one character when you start the game. Mm. And if you want to change characters, you've got to go back and restart the story. We decided we didn't want to do that. We wanted to give players a chance to experiment in all the right. com different combat situations we throw at them. So essentially, if I'm playing alone, there is no main character then. They're all pretty much equal. Well, they're very different in terms of their personalities and in terms of the progression systems that we've built for each of them and the weapons okay. that they use. And they also have very different combat functions, but we don't have one occupying the spotlight all the time. Right. They're all equally useful, just in different ways. So you have the opportunity to try them all out anytime you want. And it it's actually makes the game a lot more, it keeps it fresh as you're moving through the game, because you aren't stuck with just one character playing, doing the same sorts of things. Right. So now in terms of um, the situations that you'll encounter in the game would it behoove players to switch to a different character to use those skills to get through a particular area or is it does it not matter say the bots are doing it well that's a really good question we actually we, we toyed with that idea in creating sort of lock and key setups where right. you'd have to play dalton who is the tank in the group with the big mag shield uh, we toyed with the idea of having forcing players to do that but we decided mm, let's let's not force the, the issue. Let's allow players to discover uh, which character might be better for the setup, but we're never going to say you have to play Dalton or you have to play Naya. We want them to discover situations where Naya will shine. And we offer those opportunities throughout the game. Excellent. Okay. So you mentioned uh, character growth and progression with mm -hmm. the different characters. Is that where the fuse substance comes into play? Well, it, it drives it. So okay. in the game, it drives it in a couple of ways. First, you have fuse-powered weapons. You pick them up at the very beginning of the game. And you use fuse in the weapons to kill enemies and to discover new abilities. And as you move through the game, you're earning experience points, which allow you to level up and unlock new abilities for those fuse-powered weapons. So it's all, okay. all connected. But there are separate skill trees for every one of the characters that have that offer a lot of different things for players to unlock. And in general, those skill trees are well differentiated. So if you're playing as Izzy, you will have a different path through 
her skill tree than you have through Dalton's skill tree. And the last thing I'll say about that is because there are a lot of choices within the individual skill trees, you can kind of create your own build for a character. For example, Naya, our stealth specialist, can unlock the stealth ability, but she can also improve her skills with the shotgun which is just one of the standard weapons you pick up in the game. So having a, having a stealth slash short range shotgun build is a really cool way to develop Naya. And a lot of our guys in the office do that. I'm more of a long range guy. So right. I like using Dalton, who, is, who has a mag shield, buffing his mag shield and then developing uh, uh, more skills in with the burst rifle, which is a medium range weapon, which makes him a really good short range guy, but also balances at that with the ability to drop a shield and then take out enemies out at a distance from a medium range with the burst rifle. I'm getting into like serious. Yeah. I mean, it seems it seems like there's there's a lot of uh, variance with how a player can approach each of the individual archetypes, even yeah. you know, even though they are set up to be specific characters. Yeah, that, that was our goal. I mean, we wanted players to have a choice. Uh, choices at ver a lot of different levels in the game, whether it's who am I playing right now or how am I building out this character yeah. or where am I spending the skill points that I earn when I level up. That's important for us as game designers. We've been doing it with all of, with a lot of our games, especially Ratchet and Clank, over the right. years because it gives you uh, even more reason to progress in the game. It's not just that you want to find out what's going on with the story. You want to build your characters and you want right. to build them the way that you like to play them. So for us, that's been a lot of fun. It's kind of an RPG you know, light element that we brought into the game. Okay. Speaking of ways to play, let's uh, let's talk about Echelon mode. Can, can you explain that? So Echelon is a wave-based offensive mode, very similar to uh, Smash TV. Did you have you ever okay, played that yes. game? Where it's all about just crazy you know, cash and you know, cool stuff that you right. want to go out and grab. And we've sort of taken those two ideas and lumped them together. So it's a fast these are fast-paced 12-round battles that four players can play together. Okay. And you're using the same skills that you've developed in the campaign, but in uh, a very different setting. And those rounds are, are randomized between six different sub-objectives that you'll receive as you're moving through those battles. From hot zone, which where is the only defense defensive uh, mode where you're defending a canister of fuse, to high value target, which is a mini boss that you've got to take out within a certain amount of time. The faster you take him out, the bigger your bonus, and the fewer enemies or minions he brings in. There is uh, there there's several others that are very that help players take the offense against enemies. And one cool aspect of Echelon is that it uses a unified progression system. So if you are playing Echelon and earning XP and leveling your characters, all of that progression comes back into campaign. Okay, and I was just going to ask. And vice versa. Yeah, it's kind of cool. There's a, there is definitely a connection, a very strong connection between both, so that it doesn't matter what type of player you are, you're always going to be leveling your characters in both modes, and yeah. you see the benefit in both places. Right, right. Okay, so we're talking a lot about the mechanics of the game now, but what about narrative? When you were when you were building the game, did you was there a strong focus on narrative? Did you say start with narrative and build the game around that, or did you sort of do it the other way? Because obviously you have a, an interesting fiction set up there. Well, narrative always works hand in hand with gameplay at Insomniac, mm -hmm. and the first thing that came up was the idea that this has got to be a great four-player cooperative game that also works well for players who maybe don't want to play co-op. Right. right. That was number one. But number two, we started coming up with the world. We wanted to build a world that wasn't a grim, semi-shooter uh, that takes place in today's world. We wanted to create something that was very insomniac, a world where you journey to exotic locations and infiltrate these strongholds that are run by these villains, mm -hmm. pursuing this alien substance. I mean, all very crazy sci-fi stuff that yeah. we love at Insomniac. And so from the beginning, we started developing Fuse, the substance, the characters themselves, the, the main characters who are Overstrike 9, a team, and then the villains that they are, and the factions that they are fighting against as you move through the game. One thing I will say is that this is not a game where you see a cutscene every five minutes. <laughs> I mean, there's right. the temptation for us and for other developers is always to tell a ton of story. But with a four-player cooperative game, we have to be careful not to slow the game down so much that people are saying, come on, man, let's go, let's skip the movie. Yeah. So we try to balance it so that there is plenty of dialogue, emergent dialogue in the game during gameplay that helps players understand who those characters really are. And the back and forth between the characters shows, we believe, character evolution as you're moving towards yes. the climax of the game. Very nice, I like that. Um, 
Now this is Insomniac's first multi-platform title. What what went into that decision, and uh, I mean, how do you feel about that now? We feel really good. I, yeah. We decided to do that years ago, and that was because we saw the industry changing. Mm -hmm. We saw that players are now spreading out in terms of right. what platforms they use, and we, as a company, as an independent company, needed to make sure that what we create can be delivered to more and more players. So we are, we've are we always been PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 fans. Mm -hmm. All of us at Insomniac play games on both. Right. And it was really cool. We had a great opportunity to just go for a completely new set of fans out there. Yeah. So we're really hoping that Fuse is uh, enjoyed by Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 players. Awesome, awesome. Um, and last thing is, uh, when are we going to be playing Fuse? May 28th. We just announced that today. May 28th, announced today. And, and that's really it. Thank Ooh. you for your time. Pleasure. It's Ted Price, Insomniac Games, GamerNode.com. Keep it here.